Here are 10 must know things about personal finance to ensure a healthy financial future. Know about these and leverage them to your advantage. Let's begin. First, financial goal setting. We have a lot of talk in the world about setting life goals, but not enough is spoken about setting financial goals. You must begin your financial journey by setting clear and realistic goals. Assess where you are and draw out a plan to where you want to be in the future. A simple way to do this can be to have a current state, 2-3 to three year state and a 5 year state. This will help you visualize your short to medium term goals and create a realistic long term vision of your financial success. Whether it's saving for a home, an emergency fund or retirement. Having specific objectives will provide direction and motivation. But the most important thing, having goals will inspire savings and guide investment choices. Second, understand budgeting. Simply put, budgeting is your financial roadmap. You need to understand your income and expenses and make sure you're putting your money towards the right things including your savings and investments. You might hear about different ways of budgeting but you won't truly understand what works for you until you try them out. Here are four quick ways of budgeting. First, zero-based budgeting. Second, the pay-yourself-first budget. Third, the envelope system. Fourth, and the very popular 50-30-20 budget. Also, here are some popular apps that you can use for budgeting. The free and easy to use, Mint. This is what I use. The popular and the most effective, Vinab or You Need a Budget. Or you can use hundreds of other apps in the app store. You need to just start. For me, budgeting was a great starting point and highly important to develop financial discipline. Eventually, it got replaced by expense tracking rather than living my life in the boundaries of a budget. So please, try it out for yourself and see what works for you. Third, emergency funds. This is a lesson I learned much later in life. Nothing derails your financial goals faster than the lack of an emergency fund. Establishing an emergency fund is crucial for financial success. It ensures survival in case of unexpected financial hardships. It can come in the form of medical emergencies or job loss, which is becoming ever so common. Quick rule of thumb, if you are single with no dependents, a minimum of 3 months worth of living expenses should be in your emergency fund. If you have a family and dependents, 6 months is the bare minimum. The emergency fund includes all your essentials, housing, utilities, monthly bills of any other kind, must pay debts like mortgages and of course food and home essentials. Please do not overlook the emergency fund and establish it before you need it. Fourth, Understanding Debt as soon as we turn 18, a lot of us are forced into debt as we enter college. But having a good understanding of debt is essential to win in your financial journey. First, you need to understand the difference between good and bad debt. Good debt is often associated with investments that have the potential to increase in value over time. For example, taking out a mortgage to buy a home or getting a loan to start a business can be considered good debt. Or in some scenarios, a student loan is also good debt. Yes, I know the last one is debatable and varies for a lot of people. Bad debt, on the other hand, is associated with consumer spending that does not provide long-term value. This includes credit card debt used for non-essential purchases or high interest loans for depreciating assets like cars. Basically, if you're jumping on every new iPhone with a monthly plan, it's probably bad debt. Remember that individual circumstances and risk tolerance vary. What might be considered good debt for one person may not be the same for another. It's essential to assess your financial situation, understand the reasons for why you are taking on debt and also look into what the ROI could be. Make sure you think long and hard before taking on any kind of debt. Fifth, Credit Scores we hear the words credit score may be a little too much nowadays, but rightly so. It's becoming ever so important to maintain a good credit score, especially in a country like Canada, where credit scores are checked for rental units and even certain jobs. Your credit score matters and it's important to understand what it is and how to maintain a good one. A credit score is a numerical representation of your credit worthiness, indicating the likelihood of repaying borrowed money. In Canada, major credit bureaus like Equifax and TransUnion assess credit scores based on factors such as payment history, credit utilization, length of credit history, recent inquiries, and public records. Scores typically range from 300 to 900 with higher credit scores reflecting better credit health. Lenders use these scores to assess the risk of extending credit to you. It basically influences your ability to secure loans and financial products such as credit cards. A good credit score opens doors to financial opportunities, especially when it's time to take on good debt. Sixth, saving and investing. This is probably one of the most important things you should know about, saving and investing. 
Savings involves setting aside a portion of your income for short-term goals and emergencies. Typically, these are held in accounts like savings or money market accounts like holding GICs in Canada or T-bills in the US. It serves as a financial safety net. It is very important to have savings, but also remember, the value of our money is always being consumed by inflation. Nothing demonstrates this better than a McDonald's menu. In 1972, you could get a full meal for a dollar, and now you can't get anything for a dollar even at the dollar store. This is where investing becomes an essential component of your money management skills. It is the strategic allocation of funds with the aim of generating returns over the long term. Investments may include stocks, bonds, gold, real estate, mutual funds, and even Bitcoin nowadays. Unlike savings, investments carry a degree of risk with the potential for higher returns. Even doing something as simple as investing in the S&P 500 can help you beat inflation and grow your wealth. Make sure to balance saving and investing to achieve financial security and accumulate wealth at the same time. Seventh, tax strategies. As the saying goes, there are only two things in life that are certain, debt and taxes. The least we can do is take advantage of all the tax saving vehicles we have at our disposal. In North America, effective tax strategies involve optimizing tax deductions, credit and investment choices. I live in Canada, so let's look at it from a Canadian lens. However, it remains similar if not the same no matter where you live. Firstly, we should learn to utilize registered accounts like RRSPs for retirement savings, taking advantage of tax deferral. Then we have tax-free savings accounts for tax-free investment growth. We also have newer accounts like the first home savings account where the contributions are tax deductible and all growth tax free as long as the money goes towards a house. There are plenty of other registered accounts and plans where we can get tax breaks. If you are married or have children, you can get even more benefits. The key is to know and understand them. It's a shame how many people don't make use of these tax vehicles and pay more than their fair share of taxes. 8. Lifestyle Inflation Lifestyle inflation is the phenomenon where we increase our spending as our income increases. This often comes without corresponding increases to our savings or investments. This is a horrible thing that can happen to a person and yet it happens all the time. As earnings grow, there's a tendency to upgrade one's lifestyle, involving higher spending on luxury items, housing and leisure activities. While this may seem natural, it can hinder long-term financial goals. It can derail saving for emergencies, your investments, or retirement planning. Managing lifestyle inflation involves conscious budgeting, setting financial goals, and prioritizing savings and investments rather than just elevated spending on garbage you don't need. This is where all the previous lessons can help you stay focused. Ninth, Retirement and Financial Freedom Historically, retirement was the last stage of life where individuals cease full-time employment and rely on their accumulated savings, pensions, or investments. The term we are now more accustomed to is financial freedom. This refers to a state where one's assets generate sufficient income to cover living expenses, granting independence from traditional employment. The true freedom lies in the options you have once you reach this state. Not having to rely on your traditional job can open up many different opportunities for you. You can also just keep doing what you are doing today, but be financially free and have the pressure lifted off of you. I don't think of it as an end goal, but I constantly work towards it, and you should too. The tenth and final one, monitoring, learning, and adjusting. The last important thing that everyone should know about is keeping track of your finances. This involves three key recurring steps. First, monitoring. Regularly track your income, expenses, savings, investments, and all your financial plans. It helps you identify pattern and problems so that you can stay on track with your financial goals. Second, learning. Financial situations change due to economic shifts, market fluctuations, and personal circumstances. Continuous learning helps you adapt your financial strategies. Stay informed about any new investment opportunities, any changes in the tax laws, and also keep an eye on the economy. Third, adjusting. Your life goals and financial priorities may evolve. Adjusting your financial plan ensures that it aligns with your current objectives, whether it's buying a home, funding education, or planning for retirement. This will also help you adjust risk because risk tolerance changes with changes in your life. Those were the 10 most important things you should know about personal finance. Do not worry, we will dive deeper into these topics in the upcoming videos. For now, check out some of my other videos and as I always say, keep learning and stay on top of your finances. Until next time.